Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Our program will begin in 10 minutes.
please welcome Olga Sorkin Hornung and Everardo Reyes. Thank you for this warm welcome. It's such a privilege for me to welcome you all to the SeaGraph 2019 Technical Papers Fast Forward. The Technical Papers program showcases the creative, forward-thinking, and scientifically grounded work by our research community. Tonight, we will see the entire program in bite size, 30 seconds per paper, and the full paper presentations will run throughout the next week. I have to tell you that serving as the paper's chair throughout this past year has been the most intense experience of my career, and I'm very excited about the program that came out of this. I think we're all in for a treat. Um, we got close to 400 submissions this year from around 30 countries, and I would like to thank all the authors of these submissions for the very hard work and effort that they put into it. The submissions were reviewed by a papers committee of 58 members and also 800 external reviewers. Um, we were also assisted by 30 conflict of interest coordinators who made sure that all the reviewer assignments were without any conflict of interest in a fully double-blind peer review process. And I will say a few words about that in a minute. Um, the result of this whole effort, which is, to be honest, a tremendous effort by our whole scientific community almost, is 111 technical papers accepted to this year's program. And we also have 31 transactions on graphics papers that were accepted to the journal throughout the past year and will be presented here. So together, this makes 142 technical papers presentations. I also want to point out that new this year, we are collaborating with the posters program. So a select number of technical papers will be presented as posters in addition to the regular oral presentations. And I invite you to check out the posters and um, there you get a chance to directly interact with the authors. I would like to thank all the reviewers that um, dedica ded dedicated countless hours into this process and in particular the 58 committee members who reviewed many papers and met in Chicago for two intense days in which we decided on the eventually accepted papers. So let's give all the reviewers a big round of applause. I also have to thank a lot of people that worked very closely with me and made this whole chairing job manageable and fun. First of all, I say thank you to the sorting team that was brave enough to come to Zurich in the middle of winter, right after the paper's deadline, and they sorted through the whole set of submissions and assigned them to the committee members. I'm also very grateful to my advisory board that included the two next paper's chairs. Um, they gave me indispensable advice that was in particularly important because we made significant changes to the reviewing process this year. I have to say a huge thank you to the administrative and technical staff that makes this conference happen, and in particular this program. First and foremost, I would like to thank Leona Caffey, our paper's admin extraordinaire. <laughs> Yeah, I think that Leona should be credited as co-chair of the papers program. I'm also grateful to Alicia, Cindy, and everybody at Smith Bucklin for running such an amazing conference and doing such a great job. And I'd also like to thank Mark Montague and his team at Linklings, our online submission system, Stephen Spencer for putting together the proceedings, Adam Finkelstein for writing a fantastic software to run the papers committee meeting, and also Adam and Tom Bueller for putting together the papers trailer that I hope you all watched and enjoyed. I'm grateful to Munu and her team for putting this show together, 
And last but not least, I'm grateful to Mickey Rose, our conference chair, for her inspiring leadership and support throughout this whole process. Finally, I have to say a big thank you to my own research group at ETH Zurich, the Interactive Geometry Lab. All of my students and postdocs are here in this room tonight. And thank you so much, guys, for being so patient and understanding with me throughout all these weeks and months that I was basically MIA serving as papers chair and completely consumed by this job. So let's thank them all. Um, I mentioned that we made a significant change this year in the way we review papers, and this is uh, moving to a fully double-blind peer review process where none of the reviewers, including the committee members, know the identity of the authors. To enable that, I recruited 30 technical papers conflict of interest coordinators who did see the names of the authors and ensured that the external reviewers assigned by the committee members were without any conflict of interest. So they were our human verification system. I hope that this new system will lead to an even fairer and um, bias-free reviewing process. Here are our technical papers conflict of interest coordinators. Let's thank them all. In this context, I would also like to draw your attention to the town hall meeting that will take place tomorrow at 10.45 in room 503, uh, where the future of the technical papers program will be discussed and you're all invited to attend. So that's almost it for me. I also want to mention that we have two kinds of presentations tonight. We have the technical papers, fast forwards, and also a select number of art papers participating. And you will be able to distinguish between the two by the color of the subtitles and also the icon next to the titles of the papers. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention and to give um, the mic to Everardo, the art papers chair. Thank you. Thank you, Olga. Hello, everyone. My name is Everardo Reyes. I am uh, the art papers chair for SIGGRAPH 2019. Art papers discuss innovative digital projects that provoke aesthetic experiences and investigate cultural impacts of technology. This year, we received over 60 submissions from 20 countries, and 15 were accepted for presentation and publication. I'd like to thank our 10 jurors and 28 external reviewers that served in the rigorous review process similar to the technical papers. Art papers will be presented in three sessions this year, two on Tuesday and one on Wednesday. Long papers are published in the Leonardo Journal, and short papers are available through the ACM Digital Library and Arteca at MIT Press. None of this could have been possible without the support of many colleagues behind the scenes, and I am deeply thankful to them. And uh, finally, we encourage you to follow along with the show by using the SeaGraph mobile app. On the app, navigate to the papers fast forward. All papers will there, uh, be listed in the order that they are presented tonight. Tap on the star circle next to the paper that you are interested in, and it will be placed in your favorites list. From that list, you can navigate to the presentation tab and add the session to your personal schedule. We'd like to conclude this introduction by recognizing Adobe's uh, gratitude and generosity for sponsoring this fast, fast forward session. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, Adobe. And without further ado, please sit back and enjoy the show. Thank you.
Today's commodity camera systems rely on hardware image signal processing blocks in the ISP. Here's a typical imaging chain from a self-driving vehicle. The ISP contains many processing blocks with discrete and continuous parameters. These are tuned today by golden eye experts, and this process takes months. Moreover, for downstream tasks such as object detections, no experts exist. We propose a hyperparameter optimization method that automates this process and in just a few hours finds ISPs that perform better in low light or once they're optimized for automotive object detection. We love to take pictures with mobile phones. They are easy to use and accessible. However, small sensor size limit the image quality. To overcome some of those limitations, we use natural hand motion and bursts of images. Uh, our algorithm merges information present across different frames to remove the need for the mosaicing, produce enhanced resolution, and suppress the noise. It runs on Google Pixel 3 phone as super res zoom, as well as the night sight in under 1.5 seconds. To learn more, come to our talk as well as the poster session. See you there. Light field videos typically generate terabytes or even petabytes of data. This poses several challenges to acquisition, storage, and rendering. In this paper, we present a unified framework for efficient compressed sensing, compression, and real-time rendering of real uh, large-scale light fields. Uh, if you want to know how this works, please come to our talk tomorrow. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could just pull out your phone, capture a scene in under a minute, then render a high quality light field? We show how to do this robustly by carefully considering light field sampling theory and designing an end-to-end -end deep learning pipeline that works within the sampling framework. Rendering is so lightweight it runs in real time, even on a phone. You can capture your plants, friends, food, and more. To hear all about it, come to our talk tomorrow morning. Shallow depth of field created by large lenses is appealing by visually isolating the subject while missing for small lenses. But with large lenses, we fail to focus. And that's because decisive actions and memorable moments occur unpredictably. How did we go beyond this fundamental limitation of conventional camera autofocus? How can we pull the focus right before something happens? Or just the second before someone starts to talk? Legs, though. If, if you want to know the answer, we'll be able to... Tomorrow, 12.13, the, the future is in your hands. The visual quality of polyhedral surfaces is relevant for rendering. For applications like freeform architectural skins made of uh, reflective materials, and also for numerical computation. We show that mesh furnace deficiencies are mainly due to saddle-shaped regions that are not properly resolved in the mesh geometry. We show how to achieve smoothness by optimization, and we also give connections to discrete differential geometry. Surface parameterization is ubiquitous in geometry processing. The famous TATIS embedding is usually the go-to method as an initialization. However, it might introduce flips which are impossible to fix by hand. We present progress embedding, a flip-free robust parameterization method by combining sequence of local operations together with geometric smoothing, which is verified over thousands of models. See you tomorrow. Texture mapping usually requires atlas without overlap and with high packing efficiency. To obtain such results, we can pack the charts. However, polygon packing problem is difficult because of the irregular shape, and rectangle packing is much simpler and widely used. We utilize this, and the details will be presented in Monday morning. Thank you. Have you, have you guys ever thought to yourself that 3D printing is too fast and easy? Well, we have a solution for you. <laughs> we, have, we present an automatic basket weaving pipeline for generating 
we've woven structures out of arbitrary triangle meshes uh, and contribute two algorithms to the direction field processing pipeline. See you tomorrow. We present a new surface model that combines the power of Gaussian distributions to model uncertainty with the ease and elegance provided by subdivision schemes. We use a control mesh that encodes Gaussians in its vertices. In a subdivision step, each new Gaussian carries the product of surrounding Gaussian PDFs, resulting in a nonlinear, probabilistic subdivision surface. So forget your linear schemes that make your birdie look like a squeezed out lemon. Keep Tweety sharp and fluffy and come see my talk tomorrow in the Shape Sense session. MOS combines multiple poorly, poorly performing sampling techniques to obtain a nice image. It makes MIS a powerful and widely used method. It has been widely believed that the existing MIS heuristics cannot be improved beyond a certain limit. We show that by lifting unnecessary assumptions, we obtain truly globally optimal MIS weights. And they are visibly better in practice. Come to our talk to see more. Time gated, time gated cameras are time gated cameras are becoming increasingly common in several imaging applications. Time gated cameras operate by imaging photons whose total time of travel is in a narrow time range of interest and rejecting all other photons. This makes time gated rendering very hard. Almost all the paths created by existing path sampling technique will end up having incorrect path length and get rejected. We have come up with new path sampling strategies that enable efficient time gated rendering. Please visit our talk to learn more about these new path sampling strategies. Thank you. If you shine a laser on a scattering volume like a separate tissue, you will see this noise-like speckle pattern. But it just looks like random noise. But it has strong statistical property. Oh, look, how the speckles shift with illumination. This property is called the memory effect. Awesome. It must be so useful in many imaging applications. We have developed efficient Monte Carlo rendering for speckle statistics. So come to our talk, learn about speckle rendering, and improve your memory effect on the way. From a scene composed of a camera, 3D objects, material descriptions, and light sources, our open source library called Rodent generates high performance renders. It is implemented using NADSL, a modern compiler framework, and relies heavily on partial evaluation to specialize the renderer according to the scene. From the same high level code, we can generate renders that target CPUs or GPUs, and that only by refining the target specific parts of the renderer. Our generated renders are performed manually written renders based on state of the art libraries like optics or embry. We can capture dense shape deformation without using cameras. We achieve this with a new variable sensor called CapSkin. CapSkin is soft and measures dense surface stretch. And in combination with the data-driven prior, we can use it to accurately reconstruct deformation of 3D shapes. So we can, for example, finally quantify dynamic bicep flex volumes at any time and in any place. Well, I'm not sure if I'd really like to know the result for my biceps. But for recovering real-time hand poses under heavy occlusion, I can see many applications. And CapSkin can do that too. We developed the data glove that achieves a 35% accuracy improvement compared to commercial options. Interested? Come by to our emerging technology booth to try it yourself.
and obviously do the talks too to learn how it exactly works. By combining rotors and mix, uh, fixed wings, hybrid UAVs have better maneuverability and are efficient in long distance flights. However, controlling hybrid UAVs is super hard. We present a neural network controller trained by reinforcement learning, which can be used for hybrid UAVs. And we also close the gap between virtual simulation and real fabrication. Come to our talk on Tuesday morning. I've been captured. More blocks. I've come to rescue you. Bully, our only way out of this contraption is to reach the teapot below. But many deadly traps await us. Well, more blocks will have to be perfectly synchronized to succeed. Can Bolly and more blocks escape in the teapot together? Come discover our method to robustify the design of complex contraptions Tuesday in session four. Sometime in life, it's really hard to make the right decision, and we seek for guidance to help us to make these. Especially if you go through volumes, there are so many decisions to make. So we will present you four guiding oracles which can help you to make these decisions so that when the time comes and you start your rendering, you don't have to waste all your time to wait until it's finished. See you Tuesday at 9. <laughs> Unbiased rendering of heterogeneous media requires null collision algorithms to estimate transmittance and generate free flight distances. Due to the black box nature of null collision algorithms, path PDFs cannot be computed analytically, which severely limits multiple importance sampling. We propose a new path integral that directly incorporates null collisions. This allows us to calculate path PDFs analytically and perform MIS. If you want to learn how to combine sampling strategies in spatially and spectrally varying media, come to our talk. We propose a general physically based framework for rendering, modeling, and rendering spatially correlated medium based on the fraction Gaussian field. The fraction Gaussian field is indexed by a single parameter, the host parameter H. It supports both uh, short range and the long range correlations, and it also supports uh, heterogeneity. Welcome to our talk. Previous works we built photon on a last distance sample dimension to create photon beam, and the last two distance sample dimension to create photon planes. Our new formulation allows us to sweep photon along any two sample dimension to create photon surfaces. For example, choosing one angle and one distance create a photon cone or cylinder, and other choices create a photon sphere or even a photon bunny. Then we combine their strengths by applying modeling important sampling. So come on Tuesday if you want to know how the photon body works. Thanks. Good morning. CAVE is a shared immersive VR experience for 30 people at the same time. Everybody in the room sees and hears an animated story as though they're in a live theater, each from their own unique point of view. As audience members go on a deeply emotional journey together, they're always very aware of each other and can physically interact with each other. CAVE is experienced by almost 2,000 people at SIGGRAPH 2018. Also, we have life-size woolly mammoths. Thank you. What would you feel if this planet you see is Mars? Yes, it's AI's imagination of Mars based on its topography with visual reference to Earth. I trained a neural network with planetary data in order to create it. You are welcomed to my art paper presentation on the Terra Mars series. Thank you. Hi. This is a neural network 
that has seen nothing but thousands of images of waves and of flames and of flowers. And now, as it looks upon the world, trying to make sense of what it's seeing, it can only see through the filter of what it already knows, just like us, because we see things not as they are, but as we are. Thank you. Creating realistic soft tissue motion animations require accurate soft tissue material properties and estimates of motions that excite the tissue. Acceleration from impacts such as foot strikes generate the most dynamic soft tissue motions, but are the hardest to estimate using traditional motion capture technologies due to low sampling rates and aggressive filtering. Here, we use a sparse set of high-rate inertial measurement units to correct impact accelerations in traditional motion capture. The improved acceleration estimate leads to more dynamic soft tissue motions in animation. Please come to our talk to learn more. Thank you. We present LiveCap, the first real-time human performance capture method using just a single RGB camera. LiveCap captures not only the skeleton motion, but also the non rigid deformation of the skin and clothing, such as this skirt. Our method is robust to fast and challenging motions, and LiveCap enables many exciting applications, such as this free viewpoint rendering and virtual try-on. Thank you. I want to track my hand motion. It is challenging. No, we can do it for you. Great, but my hand is interacting with objects. Don't worry, we can handle it. Really? Can you further extract the object or even track its motion? Haha, <laughs> that is exactly what we are doing. We can reconstruct the head poses, the geometries of objects, and the rigid and non rigid motions caused by interactions in real time. Please come to our talk to know more. Thank you so much. Many previous approaches for hand reconstruction from a single depth sensor only worked for one isolated hand. In contrast, we are able to jointly reconstruct pose and shape of two hands, even when they are interacting closely. Our method is the first to combine many desirable properties, runs in real time, uses a single commodity depth sensor, handles inter and intra hand collisions, and automatically adapts to the user's hand shape. To learn how we achieve this goal and to see more amazing results, please attend our talk. Thank you. Have you ever wanted to create a quad mesh for your input surface such as this one, but was, uh, were disappointed that state-of-the-art parameterization-based quad meshing algorithms enforce boundary alignment, resulting in undesired distortion or added singularities? If so, come to our talk to learn how we use motorcycle tracing to partition the input surface into almost rectangular regions, allowing us to robustly uh, compute um, good trimmed quad meshes. Thank you. Last year, we proposed a robust meshing algorithm, but only for linear edges. This year, we are able to mesh curves. Our new algorithm, TriWild, takes 2D Bezier curves as input and produces a valid, simulation-ready curved mesh. It has been verified on around 20,000 real-world vector images. TriWild is on GitHub and free to use. Come to our talk and learn how to mesh SVGs. Suppose you do quadrangles on a sphere, adding new edges until the entire surface is covered. Given cubes that you can distort into any shape, the goal is to join them face to face so that the pattern on their boundary matches the one on the sphere. In most cases, finding solutions using as few cubes as possible is extremely hard. 
Indeed, existing methods require thousands upon thousands of cubes for simple inputs like this. In our presentation, we'll talk about how we solve these same instances using only a small number of cubes. Thank you. See you on Tuesday. Dillany tri triangulations in the plane are so nice, they're harmonic. Dillany triangulations in 3D are bad, not at all harmonic. It turns out triangulations in 3D are never harmonic, but flips may be harmonic and can be used to make nicer triangulations. Well, that's it. Each day, hundreds of meshes with perfectly good geometry are cast out for having skinny triangles. We want to help. Intrinsic triangulations see past the mesh on the outside to the shape on the inside. Our new signpost data structure makes it easy to run existing algorithms on bad meshes without reinventing the wheel. Adopt a mesh. Use intrinsic triangulations. Come to our talk. Even with dedicated ray tracing hardware, we can only render a few rays per pixel, which means that real-time path tracing produces very noisy results. We propose the first regression-based denoiser that runs in real-time and is designed for one sample per pixel inputs. Real-time performance is achieved with blockwise processing and our fast QR decomposition implementation. So we present depth working. So having depth work for Ali is uh, uh, very useful for many real-time render applications. So given depth work for, and uh, we generate depth work for and noble views. So our solution is high performance, pure backward working with high quality whole feeling. We also demonstrate uh, scalable occlusion cooling and soft shadow mapping. See you Tuesday morning. but it has one drawback, loss of intensity. This becomes a problem when thresholding, the result is non-uniform. We introduce phasor noise that produce a similar but perfectly oscillating pattern. In fact, the profile, scale, and orientation of the oscillation can be directly manipulated. Phasor noise is fast, simple, fits in a shader. Please come to your talk. It's always the small details that make up the big picture. So have you ever dreamed of painting with the brush strokes of your favorite artist? Well, now you can using TileGAN, our technique for synthesis and interactive um, editing of large scale textures. We extend standard GANs to generate textures of arbitrary size. We're able to synthesize images with billions of pixels and edit them interactively. Come to our talk on Tuesday. So generative raster networks can, can be used to create and manipulate the synthetic images. But if you have effects are striking, but they only work on synthetic ones. They don't work well on your own photos. So we present a method to adapt a pre-trained GAN to your own photo and produce realistic edits. Come to our talk and see how it works. Hi, 
I like the baby's color style. Can you transfer it to my project? Sure, no problem. Do you like this one? No, no. I don't like this green hair. Got it. How about this one? Oh, no. Don't make my face green. I'm not the hawk. Okay, okay. I think you want this. Great. This is what I want. Our progressive method can transfer color between semantically similar parts. It can also be applied to scenes color changes or makeup transfer. Welcome to our talk. Thank you. You all know what style transfer is. Can you guess which artist we used to create this image? Probably not, because it's missing the geometric style of the artist. How about now? In our work, we use a novel landmark detection algorithm to analyze and mimic various styles. We can also create average portraits of artists and more. For more details, please come to our talk. Hey, I just got a new phone with a wide-angle camera lens. Let's take a selfie. Wow, face looks distorted and terrible. Well, this is because of perspective projection. It's OK. We have an algorithm to fix it. Now it looks much better. How does it work? Well, we use perspective projection and stereographic projection on the background and faces. We combine the meshes using an optimization and the image warping. Please come to our talk and poster and take selfie with us. Thank you. I invite you to look around and try to spot any clothes with, rep with repetitive patterns like stripes or plate. For most affordable clothes, these patterns do not align along seams. Our brain is excellent at recognizing patterns, and pattern breaks can be obvious and annoying. We present a method that can be incorporated into the garment design pipeline and that ensures pattern fit across seams. For more details, please come to our talk on Tuesday. We introduced a new framework to convert TMAT to a netball structure very easily. We also provide step-by-step -step instruction for a needle to generate complex 3D shapes, such as Utah teapot and different letters. Our result can be used for yarn simulation too. Last time, we presented a way to turn 3D models into machine knit plushies. Now with a new augmented stitch match data structure that encodes both knitting instructions and dependencies, we present a structure that lets you create and edit complex knitting patterns in 3D visually in an intuitive way. To learn more about what we can do with machine knitting, come attend our talk on Tuesday afternoon. Thank you. You may have been tired of peeling the fruits. Let's try something different and interesting, peeling citrus into elegant shapes. It's quite simple. Just pick an desired shape, throw it into our program, draw the cal calculated cut lines on the citrus, and peel the citrus along the cut lines. Then a variety of vivid, uh, vivid citrus peels appeared. This art has many advantages, such as promote communication, improve relationships, and bring fun to children. Come and enjoy it on Tuesday. I found the subsepary center so paintings may have patterns, and it reveals forensic information about compositional style of paintings. So I analyzed many paintings, artists, and art movements with my algorithm to find hidden stories and new interpretations in art history. Let's discuss the discovery together on Tuesday, art paper session. Thank you. So you create amazing technology, so it's time to get more impact to open your perspective. We're part of START, the European Program for Science, Technology, and Art. We'll unveil at SIGGRAPH the results of 45 artists' residency, give you tools and methodology. 
So join us to have insights how you can engage with artists and move from technical performance to user experience. Simulates materials with a broad range of elasticity, including bleh, a control system coupled with a uh, 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 <laughs> We fix these using text-based editing. Let me edit this video of myself simply by waving my magic wand. Oh wait, that's not right. A new method lets me edit this video of myself by editing the transcript. That's better. Thank you. Have you ever wanted to model and render hair, but you couldn't because it was too difficult? What about smoke or other stuff? Why not learn how to render using neural volumes? With neural volumes, you can decode an RGBA volume that represents your object and render it by integrating along rays in space. It's trained end-to-end -end using only multi-view video as supervision. And it works on all kinds of stuff, like dogs and humans, uh, candles, also this. And it runs in real time, in VR. So what are you waiting for? Try neural volumes. This year, I am presenting Deferred Neural Rendering, image synthesis using neural textures. It allows us to render scanned objects under novel views, including view-dependent effects, to edit scenes, and to do animation synthesis. Hi, everybody. See you on Tuesday in the neural rendering session. We propose a method for neural rendering of highly realistic human actor videos. Trained on a single video of the actor and a monocular 40 reconstruction of the actor. Our CNN synthesizes uh, video realistic animations of the actor used under user controlled motion. In this way, videos can be interactively edited and motion from a source video can be mapped to a target actor. Welcome to our talk on Tuesday afternoon. Thank you. Tracking faces of VR users is hard because the faces are blocked by the headset. Our system animates a photorealistic avatar from only three monochrome cameras mounted on the headset. It captures challenging expressions like puffed cheeks, lip biting, and even tongue movements. Come to our talk to hear more about the tracking and training headset we built and how we get precise correspondence between input headset images and avatar parameters. Now both you and your friends can talk in VR as if you are together. See you Tuesday afternoon. Isotropic distortion energies are used throughout graphics for tasks ranging from UV parameterization to shape interpolation to computing nonlinear deformations like with these tires. Unfortunately, all non-trivial distortion energies are non-convex, making them difficult to optimize. We've discovered a simple formula for computing the analytical eigenvalues of any isotropic distortion energy, leading to a fast, general, and simple second-order optimization framework. So to learn how you two can deform spot the cow with whatever energy you want, come to our talk on Tuesday. And let me know if you figure out the anisotropic case. We present DOT, a new simulation algorithm that enables accurate, efficient, and stable frame rate time stepping of nonlinear deformation dynamics, even when there's large deformations and high speed motions. DOT constructs a new quasi Newton based nonlinear domain decomposition, achieving low per iteration cost, fast convergence, and dancing armadillo. See you on Tuesday.
There we go. A point interpolation refers to the task of generating intermediate objects between a pair of given objects related by an affine transformation. Given the affine transformation, the task reduces to taking roots of the transformation. We propose an intuitive decomposition framework for affine interpolation which in comparison to other state of the art methods while preserving several interpolation properties also ensures an interpolation in all the cases. For more details, please come to my talk. Thank you. Over the past few years, IG8 is asked with the idea of using spline as basis in simulation because they are fast and efficient. However, most results only apply on regular grid, leaving us wondering, is this just a dream? Well, no, come to my talk and I will explain how to fulfill your dreams or how to use spline on irregular X meshes. And since no dream is, not, is too big, how to combine them with polyhedra. Simulated characters can easily process superhuman capabilities, like this. Don't you see more human-like motion? So Wednesday 9 a.m. first presentation, we will present how to prevent your character from being superhuman. Thank you. Imagine we are in the gym. Uh, which muscle should I use to lift the bar? What do I have to do to jump higher? We simulate and control human musculoskeletal system to predict muscle excitation patterns and reproduces natural human movements. Our system not only re reproduces various motions, but also reproduces various body conditions, such as prosthetic legs. See you on Wednesday. In this paper, we synthesize three soccer motions, driven forward, driven to the side, and shooting. We captured the several soccer motions Using the motion data, we synthesize a reference motion to be simulated. The reference motion should contain the next kick pose. Then the character can track the reference motion and kick the ball at the right time and position. Thank you. We can take your 2D pose sequence, extract your motion, retarget it into other skeletons, and rotate it into new view angles while bypassing 3D reconstruction. Using our framework, we can independently interpolate between motion, view angles, and skeletons. We can clone the performance of one actor into another, and we can build a cool motion search engine. If you want to hear more, you should come to our talk. We propose a novel deep learning based method that can synthesize new views from six widely spaced known views under controlled lighting. Our network predicts novel view depth and visibility aware attention maps to effectively aggregate model view appearance, which achieves much better results than previous work. Our method handles complex appearance effects, including challenging occlusions and specularities. For more details, please come to our talk on Wednesday morning. Thank you. The light stage has been a very influential technology in the graphics industry. It has been particularly useful in acquiring reflectance fields and fine scale geometry of real actors for various research proje projects and Academy Award winning movies. But this very high quality acquisition and relighting has traditionally been limited to static poses. For the first time, we present a light stage method that uses deep learning to generate reflectance fields that can be used to relight in very high quality the dynamic performance of actors without any pre-scanning, opening up new virtual reality experiences. Come see us on Wednesday at 9 a.m. in room 512. You missed sunrise and could not get the perfect lighting for your last shot? No worries. Our method can change the lighting of your pictures. Or even drone videos. 
our network uses geometric cues from multi-view input. So you can obtain realistic cache shadows. Come to our talk on Wednesday morning and we will illuminate you. People like to take portraits using their cell phones. However, the light condition is not controllable during capture. As a result, the lighting on the face might not be ideal. To solve this problem, we collected portraits from the light stage and trained a neural network to change the lighting of the portrait after capture. Now we can apply new lightings on a normal RGB portrait without retaking it. Please come to our talk and poster to learn how we play with the magic of lighting. Current industry standard weaving software isn't well suited for designing three-dimensional fabrics. So we've joined forces with Team Textiles in Woonsocket, Rhode Island, and computer scientists at Cornell to develop WeaveCraft, a new visualization and design tool for the spatial design of 3D woven fabrics. This design tool gives us as designers an easy entry point into the iterative potential of 3D woven fabrics, allowing us to create fully formed consumer wearables straight off the loom, like this 3D woven shoe. Thank you. OK, we introduced a novel method that can generate a sequence of physical transformations between 3D models. We try to generate a simple path as a chain configuration. To represent them, all the models can be unfolded into the same chain, and therefore, they can be folded into another model as well. Uh, welcome to room 150 on Wednesday morning. Thank you. We can easily print 3D shapes using a uniformly colored filament, but existing printers cannot produce quality replicas of multicolored shapes such as this ball. Our surface-to-volume algorithm automatically partitions such models into individual parts, each of which can be fabricated using a single color filament. Assembling these parts together produces the desired multicolored object. Come to our talk to learn more. Thank you. In additive manufacturing, we mostly print flat layers. But what if we use some curved layers? This will allow us to follow the shape of the object and thus reduce the reproduction error displayed in red during the material deposition. With our method, we are able to print some complex objects with a standard 3-axis printer. If you want to see some prints or know more about the technique, just, to see, uh, just come to see my talk on Wednesday. We present a method for designing mechanical metamaterials based on Voronoi diagrams induced by star-shaped distances. As one of its central advantages, our approach supports interpolation between any pair of metamaterial geometries. We open a rich space of structures with interesting aesthetics and mechanical properties. If you want to know more, come to our talk. Thank you. We introduce X-shells, a new class of deployable structures made of coupled elastic beams. X-shells have a flat configuration optimized for easy assembly and can be deployed to their 3D shapes by a simple expansive actuation. We optimize the X-shell layout to minimize stress and compute a sparse subset of joints to actuate, all while still producing the desired 3D shape. Many interesting shapes can be designed with our approach and then be physically fabricated and deployed. Hope to see you at our talk. Hi, I'm filling in here due to a late flight and hereby apologize for the absence of any jokes. Um, speaking of flights, uh, we present a method to uh, reconstruct building-sized scenes using flying robots. And to do so, we need to tackle several challenges, including viewpoint selection, efficient traversal of the viewpoints, and all of that within the battery lifetime of the robot. We formulate this as an optimization problem that ensures desirable properties for viewpoints 
uh, for surface reconstruction and respects the physical limits of the robot. Come see our talk for more details. We introduce a collaborative scanning approach that makes use of multiple robots to jointly reconstruct a scene by sharing their scanning resources. The objective of our solution is to maximize both the collective scanning coverage and reconstruction quality while minimizing the overall scanning effort. We achieve this objective based on optimal mass transport. Our method obtains complete, high-quality reconstruction results efficiently. Welcome to our talk. Thank you. See you on Wednesday. See you there. This paper is about an improvement to the iterative closest point, or ICP algorithm, which is used for 3D mesh alignment. Previous work does this by minimizing either the distance between corresponding points or the distance from one point to the plane containing the other point and perpendicular to its normal. In contrast, this work minimizes in the direction that's the sum of the two normals. It turns out that this small difference results in faster convergence and has some neat theoretical properties. See you Wednesday. X-ray CT imaging usually assumes that your object holds still while you're trying to scan it. Uh, we are interested in using CT scanning for acquiring dynamic objects and dynamic phenomena. Uh, previous work in this, uh, on this topic, including our own from last year, has made some pretty strong assumptions on the amount of motion that can be present. And in this way, uh, work, we overcome that and are able to reconstruct uh, geometries that really have different geometry for every single projection frame that we have. More on that on Fred Wednesday. Thank you. Hi, we propose a method to do Poisson reconstruction without solving any uh, linear system, which makes the method more direct and simple and uh, very easily uh, parallelizable. Uh, for more detail, please come to our talk. We present an algorithm to interpolate between two directional fields on the same mesh, creating intermediate animation frames by moving singularities around along geodesics. Our method computes a matching between singularities by solving a convex without integers uh, optimal uh, transport problem. And we are able to handle all cases of uh, directional field symmetries or rosies uh, in genus and boundaries. Come on Wednesday to our talk. Parallel transport is a core operation in geometry processing, but transporting vectors one at a time is a lot of work. Our method uses short time heat flow to transport vectors all across a surface, and it's simple, accurate, and extremely efficient. This algorithm, which we call the vector heat method, enables many applications, including geometric centers and the global log map. Even better, it needs little more than a Laplace operator, so you can even do it on point clouds. Come check it out. Many artists daily convert bitmap images like this one into a set of curves, a process called vectorization. Yet they often prefer tracing curves manually rather than using automated tools because modern software doesn't do well around junctions. We fix this by generating a polyvector field, lots of little crosses that align to curves and help us get clean junctions. Come to our session to learn more. Grabbing a beer requires you to find an optimal transport assignment. 
state-of-the-art can do that in OFN squared. But our brand new method can do that in OFN squared, but much faster. And to optimally grab bills in higher dimension, you just need to project on 1D lines and iterate. This can be used for point set regis registration and color matching. Please come to our session. MeshCNN is a neural network which operates directly on the mesh edges. Convolutions are applied on edges and their four edge neighborhoods. Pooling is applied via a learned edge collapse operation which retains the mesh topology. The network learned collapses give an insightful glimpse into the inner workings of the network. Come here more Wednesday at 2 p.m. This is a class of two pairs of shapes where each pair indicates one collection and the red part fits tightly into the cavity of the blue parts. Our satellite performs very well on such a challenging case as we analyze and generating 3D shapes by jointly considering their structure and geometry, learning their underlying uh, interrelations, enabling shape completion, and the translation in between geometry and structure. See you Wednesday. Can traditional indoor scene modeling involving manual adjustment of objects using a keyboard and a mouse be made automatic and efficient? With a meaningful hierarchical scene representation, we present GRAINS, a novel generative method for indoor scenes based on recursive variational autoencoders. Using this approach, we're able to efficiently generate plausible, novel, and diverse scenes within a fraction of a second. For more details, please come to our talk on Wednesday. Thank you. I have a question for you. Can you find the correct furniture arrangement in this scene? It is quite hard only looking at the images, since objects are occluded. An actor that interacts with the scene makes it easier. However, it also raises another question. How did the actor move? We developed iMapper, a method that answers these questions jointly. Given only the actor's heavily occluded motion, iMapper recovers both the plausible furniture arrangement and the actor's full unoccluded motion in 3D. Please come to the talk for more details. Hi, everyone. In the fluid session on Wednesday, I will present our strong fluid rigid coupling approach for SPH incompressible fluid solvers, which improves quality, stability, and performance. To facilitate this strong coupling, we propose a novel SPH-based rigid body solver which is interlinked with the fluid solver. Together with previous work regarding highly viscous fluids and elastic solids, we can simulate complex scenes in a unified framework purely based on SPH. Thank you. See you on Wednesday. A rail ferrofluid shows interesting geometry in the magnetic field. Our simulator is the first one to capture this dynamical behavior in, re in the virtual world. We can control the magnet and attract the ferrofluid all the way to the top. Our simulator can achieve the same result. Come to our talk on Wednesday afternoon in the fluid session one to see the secret behind the scene. Thank you. your viscous simulations taking too long? Are you waiting more than a day to get results back? Try our novel adapted viscosity discretization and get results back in just a few hours. We discretize the viscosity step on an octree grid, keep a fine resolution at the surface and rapidly course it inwards, achieving an order of magnitude performance improvement over industrial software. So you can get results back in hours instead of days. Thank you. Wanna have a break? I got some food. Sounds good. I like mayo. I like honey. Can we simulate mayo? Of course, use NPM. The mixture looks much less viscous. Can we simulate the change in the viscosity? Yeah, there's a single paper this year about viscosity blending. Really? This is it. Take a look. 
Come to our talk on Wednesday afternoon. Artists and amateurs are comfortable using virtual reality brush interfaces to draw complex 3D shapes. Unfortunately, existing geometry processing tools dramatically fail when trying to convert such drawings into usable 3D models. Our surface brush method successfully reconstructs 3D models from such drawings, facilitating a range of downstream applications. Come to our talk to learn how to do it. Thank, Thank you. you. Head-mounted displays require low latencies and high resolutions that are challenging for the traditional graphics pipeline. Come to our talk in room 150 on Wednesday at 3.45 to see how perceptual rasterization can, use, can perform ray tracing in the fragment shader, generating images non-linearly in space and time for foveated rendering, lens distortion, and latency compensation to support the next generation of HMDs. Foveated rendering is a promising solution to improve rendering cost by reducing the peripheral resolution. Standard methods adjust the rendering quality using only retinal eccentricity, but the visibility also depends on the underlying content. In order to push foveated rendering to the limits, we propose a perceptually inspired model which considers this effect, and it provides better quality and performance on different platforms. Please come to our talk and visit our poster for a demo. Thank you. Mm. Hi, we present a foveated augmented reality display. The idea is to combine a large field of view, HOE based a raw resolution purple display, and a high resolution small field of view foveal display. We track users' gaze with a pupil tracker and move the micro display and the hologram accordingly to provide dynamic foveation. We also have an emerging technology booth, ET152. Please come. Thank you. Have you ever tried operating your phone with glove but fails? Have you ever feel uncomfortable to zoom in the camera with a single hand? Are you bad at mobile gaming because of no tangible feedback? We built a tiny 3D printed system to solve all this problem. We even made a virtual saxophone on the phone. Thank you. It is amazing what people can do with complex physical systems such as string puppets. With the long-term goal of endowing robots with human-level dexterity, we present a physics-based motion planning framework for robotic animation of marionettes. Our novel trajectory optimization method generates motions that are specified directly in the configuration space of the robot puppeteer. Our framework makes it easy to experiment with different puppet designs and target motions, and the resulting nominal trajectories can seamlessly be transferred to the physical world. Projected Gauss-Seidel is a popular method for solving contact problems. 
However, it converges slowly for poorly conditioned problems, such as those with high mass ratios. In this work, we reformulate contact as a non-smooth function and show how to solve it using Newton's method. This approach allows you to use your favorite linear solver to handle stiff complementarity problems. Our method supports two-way coupling with elastic bodies and can be used for large-scale reinforcement learning tasks such as this one. We propose a new method called RedMax, which combines the reduced and maximal coordinates. RedMax is near linear term, which is more efficient than the previous methods. With our framework, it's flexible to work with cables, deformable body with two-way coupling, uh, internal and external friction contact, and so on. Our method is much easier to implement than the previous methods. Please come to our talk to find out more. Many geometry processing tasks require to manipulate deformations. This raises the question of how to describe deformations for solving problems like shape design. For example, it can be difficult to compare deformations on two shapes with different discrete representations. We introduce a novel representation by tracking how they affect functions defined on the surface. With this point of view, we can perform challenging tasks like making a deformation anti-symmetric. To learn more about deformations, please come to our talk. In 1945, Pablo Picasso created a sequence of wall paintings with simpler and fewer strokes. But what did Picasso try to do here? And the answer is mesh simplification. We present a new simplification algorithm that can preserve the spectral property of a shape. For instance, our method can preserve eigenvalues of the Laplace operator much better than the standard simplification. And we can also preserve the eigenvalue, eigenvectors. To learn more about spectral coarsening, please come to our talk. Thank you. These two cubes have different extrinsic structures. Traditional shape analysis based on the intrinsic Laplace operator cannot distinguish them. Alternatively, we take an extrinsic approach and consider the operator mapping any surface function to the normal gradients of its harmonic interpolation. Simply substituting the Laplace operator with our new operator can introduce extrinsic geometry to many applications. So imagine you have never seen a chair model before. Then probably it's hard to identify its semantic parts. Yet in presence of a steel model with similar seat and necks, then one can easily identify the chair back of the part because it's added to stew. We introduce an approach that leverages such shape differences to identify shape parts with the application in shape co-segmentation. This approach is introduce a novel tensor-based joint shape matching method. Our goal is to extend a given sparse landmark correspondence to a smooth, dense correspondence. We utilize the Dirichlet energy to obtain a harmonic map, but unfortunately, its optimization shrinks the map. Luckily, the reversibility term saved our maps from shrinking, and now our maps are both smooth and bijective as visualized using texture transfer. How do we optimize the reversible Dirichlet energy? Find out on Wednesday afternoon. Imagine that you have enough money for the rest of your life, so you can afford to become an animator. Good luck finishing. <laughs> Good luck finishing a movie before you die. Traditional animation takes ages. It's a real pain in the ass, I mean time-wise. So we propose a new pipeline where we take a video, paint one frame, and the rest of the sequence is computed automatically with temporal coherence, which makes the production of hand-drawn movies much faster, and we would love to see a lot of them on the silver screen. So see you at the Oscars. We present a novel method for video extrapolation. It can create high quality extended views from a conventional video. Our key idea is to integrate the information from all of the frames in the input video to create a single extended frame. 
enjoy our results, and come to our talk. Thank you. The usual 360 degree video viewing is not comfortable because of viewer need to constantly change the viewing direction. We propose an interactive and automatic navigation system for comfortable viewing. Our system shows the most important parts of the video and the user can interactive, interactively change the viewing direction. Then our system instantly updates the path reflecting user specified direction. Please come to our talks for more details. Capturing 360 degree videos and watching in VR can be uncomfortable because of the difficulties of the shaky motion and knowing where to look. Stabilization only is not enough because the viewers may be still confused when the stabilized direction is not well designed. In this work, we jointly stabilize and redirect videos to put the interesting content in the front of viewers and improve the immersive experience for the viewers, especially for VR. Uh, welcome to our talk for more details. Thank you. We introduced fabric formwork. We calculated a set of flat panels, sew them together to make a container, and pour in liquid plaster. After the joists, we get the plaster prototype. Our inverse design optimizes the panel shapes to match the target. We also optimize the hanging orientation to reduce deformation. And then we introduced three types of external supports, planes, cables, and strings. And here are a few plaster prototypes. Do you want to learn how to fabricate crazy shapes like this using only a two-piece mold and a single cast operation? Then please come on out to our talk on Thursday morning, room 152, and discover how to cut silicon like a pro and rock like a star. <laughs> we do metal too. Our 3D printer can play Pong and print many colors. We print this earth and get this result. It's so bad, it's not even close. Our duty is to make the world better. We sharpen the texture, we make the colors match the printer capabilities. We have the best world anywhere in the world, sharper than ever. We have a good talk. People say we have the best talk. Are you interested in tagging everyday shapes? Well, now you can. Come here about layer code, a method for tagging complex 3D shapes, and see how we test it on thousands of 3D models from Thingi 10K to achieve a 99% success rate. We also implement it on all common 3D printers, enabling cool extensions such as depth estimation for a single image for 2.5D image manip, and also for outdoor tagging. Please come to our talk on Thursday morning. So that the mush offer high quality deformation without using skinning weights. But this indirect computation is costly because of the geometry smoothing at runtime. We have reworked the math, and here we present a direct delta mush, a high performance skinning model with the same simple setup and better deformation quality. Our new model is free of polishing, and uh, it's the first direct skinning model to support skin sliding effect. Please come to our talk on Thursday morning. With the input of a character model and a skeleton structure, we propose a method to construct a graph first, then fit it into the proposed deep graph convolution network to predict skinning rates. Here is the animation result. Thank you. Thank you.
Skinning weight determines the quality of the deformation, and automatic algorithms sometimes fail to capture the user's intention. Paint-based interface is widely used for manual definition of skinning weight. However, it is rather cumbersome to use. We propose spline-based interface for intuitive skinning weight editing. Come to our talk to see more results. Thank you. So we scan the human hand in multiple poses using a MRI scanner. And from this, we then build a computational model for how the bones move inside the human hand as you are articulating the hand. And then we add a soft tissue finite element method simulation to compute the motion of the entire hand. We also optically scan the surface of the hand to obtain high precision surface detail and then combine that with the FEM simulation. Fluorescence is everywhere, from indoor to outdoor, from the ground to the sea, and from mundane to exotic. Fluorescence is very useful phenomena in a wide range of applications, but it is very challenging to measure precisely. So we designed novel fluorescence imaging techniques that enable to measure fluorescence properties at low cost and high speed. Please come to our presentation. Thank you. Non-line of sight imaging aims at recovering hidden objects. In a scene like this, where the oncoming vehicle is not directly visible, as a blue truck is in the way. Existing methods image such hidden objects by looking at their indirect reflections. So we go one step further and image hidden objects behind hidden objects, such as this pedestrian. Our image formation model allows us to recover a scene geometry which is lost with other methods, and the proposed parameterization has already enabled recent work to achieve high resolution reconstructions. See you on Thursday at 11 a.m. Our work focuses on imaging objects that are hidden from sight, such as when an occluder blocks a camera's view. By reflecting light off of visible surfaces, like this diffuse wall, it's possible to image objects using indirect reflections. We propose a fast reconstruction procedure, uh, which gives us high fidelity <laughs> reconstructions based on the wave equation for objects with complex geometry and reflectances. We can even do this outdoors and at real-time rates. Thank you. Traditional color imaging captures three channels of red, green, and blue. Instead, hyperspectral imaging captures dense spectral information. Previous hyperspectral cameras perform very well, but form factor is too large because of the large form factor. We reduce the large size of the optics into a single DOE by designing a spiral pattern that creates spectrally bearing PSF. It enables high quality hyperspectral reconstruction through a end-to-end -end network. Please come to computation session on Thursday. Thank you. Thursday. In our talk, we presented a method for simulating deformations together with contact and friction forces through the Lagrange multiplier method as a single optimization procedure. Our method obtains accurate results faster compared to methods that construct and solve the intermediate problems. 
Furthermore, our method is able to efficiently simulate many complex, rigid, and deformable objects, and it can even squeeze armadillos. Interested? Come to our talk on Thursday morning. When manually dressing virtual characters, garment meshes often end up in, inter in, inter in intersection, with that which doesn't suit simulators. Our model uses implicit surfaces that approximate the garments and that we combine in order to provide a good intersection-free starting point for an animation. Our method is robust to a high number of layers. This character is not used to air, con air conditioning in the US, so to keep him warm, we, we dress him with 30 t-shirts. <laughs> Thank you. See you Thursday. We taught a computer to optimize code via search guided by a neural network trained on random halide programs. We then implemented this network in halide and asked it to optimize itself using the powers of auto differentiation, at which point it transcended. The post-singularity entity that we have inadvertently created has permitted us its humble servants to tell you about our work on Thursday morning in the sound graphics section. Thank you. Hey there. So pre-computed acoustic transfer makes real-time modal sound models sound great, but solving the Helmholtz equation for every mode really sucks. It's like playing a 300-note scale on a keyboard at 13 minutes per note. What if, like Klein's mother chord, we can play many notes at once? Our Kleinpat algorithm conflates modes into chords, performs a few time-domain GPU wave solves, then deconflates to get every transfer function. It's now more than 4,000 times faster than fast boundary element methods at making sound models. We propose a new method for synthesizing sound, and continuing both sound modeling and sound synchronization. Dropping pattern and bubble resonance are per community kit. And then a PR sound bank uh, is created. Here we show two results. In the first video, the ring number is changing. And here, the material is changing. Thank you. We present a new method for reconstructing an implicit surface from unoriented points. Traditionally, this is done by first estimating surface normals and then optimizing for the surface. However, even small errors in normal estimation can lead to large surface artifacts. In contrast, we simultaneously optimize for both the normals and the surface, which leads to much more robust reconstructions. Our method is easy to implement as a single parameter and works in any dimension. See you Thursday near lunch. Denoising is an efficient way to generate high quality Monte Carlo renderings. Traditional methods use per pixel summary statistics of the sample distributions. We present the first convolutional network that can denoise Monte Carlo renderings directly from the samples. Our model outputs a splatting kernel for each of the samples, and it is invariant to permutations of the samples. This design better handles complex light transport scenarios, including depth of field and motion blur. Our method is general and robust to severe noise levels. In 2015, Ket Turner and colleagues introduced Mr. Kajia and Monte Carlo sampling of Mr. Poisson in the gradient domain path tracing rendering algorithm that directly samples image gradients and reconstructs the final image by solving a Poisson equation. This year, we replaced Mr. Poisson with a deep convolutional neural network. This yields a much more powerful reconstruction algorithm that beats its standard rivals by a surprisingly large margin. Thank you.
Subsurface scattering describes the effect of light interacting with a medium inside of a translucent object. This is important when rendering, for example, human skin or a glass of milk. Simulating this explicitly is really expensive. Most current approximations assume the geometry to be flat. In our work, we propose a novel learned subsurface scattering model which can account for arbitrary geometry. Compared to previous work, this results in a more realistic image. To learn more, please come see our talk on Thursday. Traditional Eulerian skin is fast, yet suffers from numerical dissipation. Hybrid skin is relatively slow and sometimes produces noisy results. We propose by mock a purely Eulerian skin to efficiently and conservatively solve the fluid advection equation by using bidirectional mapping. As a general purpose uh, advection skin, our method is able to solve the advection equation of any fluid quantities like velocity, density, temperature, and level sets, and phenomena like combustion and car drifting. For more technical details, please come to our talk on Thursday. Bubble rings are fun and have complicated dynamic behavior. Dolphins clearly appreciate this. We derive a physical-based simulation using vortex filaments that can recreate these fascinating mm -hmm. dynamics. Our model can achieve realistic results using only curves with a few vertices. The same algorithm also simulates ink chandeliers created by dropping ink into water. Find out how we do this in our talk in the Fluids 2 session this Thursday. We introduce fundamental solutions for water wave animation. An analytic technique for wave simulation that supports reflection, diffraction, and wave shadowing from obstacles on any scale, no matter how far we zoom in or out. For details and more interesting color schemes, please come to our talk on Thursday. Cut-down based editing is very useful and uh, widely used for image, video, and even text. For fluid flow, is there such editing? Uh, of course there is. Ours can edit the fluid flow uh, using the cut-down based operations. Please come to our talk. Thank you. We invite everyone interested in simulating the growth of plant ecosystems to our presentation. We explain a method that allows modeling hundreds of thousands of interacting plants in real time. All known forest biomes can be generated automatically. Our method is based on biological knowledge, such as ecological successions or individual branch growth strategies. Do not grow your garden without simulating it first. I do not support symbolic queries showing bedrooms instead. Ugh, guess I'm gonna go have to do some research. Let's try this again. Converting query into partial graphs. Completing graph. Instantiating scene. Here are some possibilities. Much better. Thank you. Writing was really important for human beings, but now we are more familiar with typing on keyboards. When you create your own computer fonts, traditionally you have to first learn how to make fonts, and then draw or write all characters out. For English, yeah, a piece of cake. 
well, for Chinese, writing all those 10 or 1,000 characters is quite a big headache. But now using our system, you only need to write a small number of characters and then your personal handwriting forms can be generated automatically. Don't know how we solve this problem? Join our talk on Thursday. Thank you. Thank you. We present unified framework for isolating SVBRDF from arbitrary number of input image by optimization from a learned latent space. Our method producing plausible results when the input doesn't contain all the reflection information and progressively translate to an accurate result by more and more measurement. Our method also supports arbitrarily high spatial resolutions, as shown here. For more details, come to our talk in the very last technical paper session. Humans are able to recognize materials and compare their appearance just by briefly looking at them. Unfortunately, such perceptual process is not yet understood. We present a deep learning-based similarity measure for material appearance. Using our measure, we can progressively extend the search distance from the original aluminum in a controlled manner. Our similarity measure can be further used to generate a friendly set of plastic toy robots or to create deadly armies of metal ones. Count our poster and our talk. Thank you. Here's the color. There's more to it than meets the eye. We like bright and saturated colors, all of them, even if they are weird. But we also need to handle boring colors. And then we want to store many of them, millions and billions and trillions. Now we can. Are you curious how? Complex surface appearance can be modeled by high resolution displacement maps, but they are expensive to render because of various illumination effects. We present an accurate pre filtering technique that can provide multi scale AT aliased renderings. Compared with prior techniques, our model can match the reference because we capture interreflections. Want to know more? Don't miss the last talk of SIGGRAPH. Thank you. All right, that's it, folks. So let's thank all the speakers of today. I would also like to acknowledge the general sponsorship of Adobe. There should be a slide with their logo. Here it is. Thank you. And this is it. I wish you a fantastic conference. See you around.